Today we are going to look at making financial decisions based on stochastic dominance. Here we are going to use probability density function, the mass function, and the cumulative distribution function to make decisions about portfolio choices. First thing first, we have to think about the process of decision making in financial economics, right? So what do we assume about a rational investor in financial economics? We assume first that a rational investor is not saturated, meaning that they prefer more to less. That is to say that every increment of wealth makes them a little bit more extra. So as you can see, the, again, the utility function which measure satisfaction always has to increase. Secondly, we assume that a rational investor is risk averse, meaning that every additional uh, increment of return is less valuable than the last uh, increment. Um, so as you can see on the function, uh, the utility function has to uh, bend uh, like away from uh, risk. So you will still be happy, but every increment makes you uh, gain is less valuable than the previous increment as this function shows. The more the wealth increase, the utility, and the utility function does not increase by the same rate. So now let us look at using stochastic dominance to make this decision. Say you have two investment opportunities where you will have to choose only one of the two investments, A and B. Suppose that for our sake that these two, uh, I mean like these two uh, investment A and B have equal variances. So as you can see by the two graphs, um, the a has like 5% mean and B has 7% mean. So by looking at uh, these two uh, functions, I mean these two probability density function, it's clear that you will choose uh, B from A. But then how do you actually show this relationship? That's when you have to use first order stochastic dominance. In first order stochastic dominance, um, you will use the CDF or the cumulative distribution function. As you can see, the CDF of B is less than the CDF of A, right? So we will have to choose B uh, because uh, for every point of the probability, um, the return for B is higher than that one of A. So basically, if you prefer more to less, you will obviously choose uh, A, o, I mean B over A, because it has higher return than uh, A, and they have equal uh, variance. But most importantly, the decision on first order stochastic dominance is based on the CDF. So when you want to make that decision, you basically just have to look at the CDF. That's it. So it's easy to make the decision. That's why this uh, um, theory is very important. Second of all, so suppose now that you have um, again, I'm like again, you have something which is a little bit complicated than what we just did. As you can see uh, here, um, where we have uh, the following distribution, uh, where you have to choose uh, one of them. So, which one would you choose, A or B? So, as you can see by this uh, probability density function, A is more volatile than B, and B is less volatile. Than A. So when we draw the CDF or the cumulative distribution function, clearly um, at some point um, the CDF of A, I mean like of B is less than that one of uh, of B is less than that one of A. Uh, this is uh, below K as you can see, and then above K the CDF of A uh, is great is less than that of B. Now. What do you do? So that is when you introduce a new stochastic dominance, which is called the second order stochastic dominance. In here, we will assume that an, an investor is risk averse, and we will use um, the again, and we will have to use um, the integration of the two function. So when you integrate uh, a and b, 
and you draw the function this is how it will look so as you can see b the again as you can see the integration of of the cdf of b is less than that one of a meaning that uh, b is less volatile than a and therefore you choose b so since you are a rational investor you will obviously choose b so basically this shows us that this theory is very important because it reduces our decision making processes to just looking at the cdf or the integration of the cdfs so if you have the cdfs you can make the decisions so this is a huge contrast compared to the mean variance portfolio using Markowitz model or the capital asset pricing model or factor models or even uh, the utility theory that you have learned previously so here you simply just have to look at the cdf function and you can make decision easy as that so anyway thank you for watching our video um please like this uh, if you like it and subscribe and also if you wish to book a private session where we go into details uh, about these uh, things you can email us or you, or you can go to our website or whatsapp us all the details will be in the description box here thank you